What's happening guys, Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So tonight we're going to take a look at the September 20th edition of Impact, another good show. Um, I enjoyed the episode, however, I think there's still a long way to go for this Bound for Glory build. We are, what, three weeks or three episodes of Impact left to go. Um, still a couple matches that need to be announced, um, so hopefully that will accomplish these tapings will accomplish that. Um, I think at the end of the video I'm going to come up with my own predictions as far as the rest of the matches go for Bound for Glory. Uh, before we get into the show, I just want to thank everybody who subscribed to the page. We just hit 400 subscribers earlier on in the week, and we are on our road to 500. Uh, hopefully when I hit 500 I'm going to do another giveaway. I have a couple of impact uh, autographs that I'm going to give away and. Uh, we will get to that when we get to it. So we open the show with a six-man tag, OVE versus Laredo Kid, Aerostar, and Hijo Del Vikingo. Um, this was the return for Laredo Kid and Aerostar. We saw Laredo Kid, I think, over a year ago. Aerostar a couple months back uh, after the Redemption pay-per-view and that set of tapings in Orlando. Um, I was impressed with Vikingo. I, I thought he had some good stuff in the ring. I, I thought this was a good match. Great way to open the show. Um... I love that the announcer had all the luchadors pronounce, uh, introduced in Spanish, and then OVE was done in English. It was kind of cool. Um, it, it's just, I really love the concept that Impact has when they go to the countries and they use talent that we normally don't get to see on a regular basis. It just really shakes things up, gives a fresh feel to the show all the time. Um, the only downfall is that, obviously, we're trying to build toward a pay-per-view, so there is a lot of stuff that isn't really necessary. Um, this was basically because OVE wanted to prove that they were the best trio in Impact Wrestling, so I think we'll probably get a few more matches from them uh, throughout the Mexico tapings. Uh, like I said, it was a good good match. Um, we saw OVE hit Vikingo with a nasty powerbomb onto the apron. Got a bunch of fl high-flying spots by the Luchadors uh, to OVE on the outside, but Eventually, OV gets the win with the all-seeing eye. It seemed like it was a mixture of Lucha Libre rules and tagging in, because sometimes I noticed they'd get out of the ring and a new person would get in. Other times, they would tag. But, like I said, good stuff to open the ma uh, open the show. Um, I like the arena. The crowd seemed pretty good last night. Uh, I think it's pretty common in Mexico where they have that big gap between the ring and the... Uh, the crowd, it, it just gives them so much more freedom to do a lot of work outside the ring. Um, not normally where it seems like a lot of things are crammed. Uh, then we go backstage, and Rich Swan and Matt Seidel are there. Uh, Seidel says, tonight we should become a unit. Uh, Rich Swan was kind of pissed at this because I guess they originally had a match schedule between the two of them. Seidel says, how about we team up and take on the Lucha Brothers? And, you know, Swan was kind of intrigued by this, which I was like... Yes, I want to see that match. And we did get that match later on. Uh, then we get Tessa. She walks into what I'm guessing is the woman's locker room. Uh, she asks the woman who's there, which apparently was uh, Chica Tormenta, uh, you know, whose stuff is this? Shit, it was hers. Tessa threw it at her, said, nope, my stuff's going here. I'm the champ. Tessa with her uh, heel attitude. She does a great job of it. Very intense. So, uh... Chica Tormenta leaves the room, uh, then all of a sudden, Fabi Apache comes up and says, you know, uh, we respect each other around here, and kind of tell Tessa's like, you know what, I don't even want to be in this locker room anyway, so that was obviously setting something up later on, which we will get to, and I'm sure this isn't the last time we will see uh, the other woman as well, but uh, Tessa doing a good job being a uh, very intense heel, I, I think they're probably playing off the fact that she, her reputation, I guess, was that she was hard to work with, so that really, she can use that for her character, but uh, I've heard nothing but positive things about Tessa outside the ring. Uh, and then we head to the ring, and we have an Eli Drake open challenge. I don't know about you guys, but I thought the audio was a little off during Eli's entrance. Eventually, it kicked back, and everything was fine. Um, it, it's, it was kind of a downfall with Eli being able to interact with the audience so much, uh, with the English audience, obviously, uh, it just didn't seem as well. I mean, he still did a good enough job, but it wasn't the usual nonsense we get uh, with the crowd, you know, yelling at him, dummy, and whatnot. Uh, Trevor Lee is the one to answer the open challenge, however. Um, this was good because 
They had some history. This wasn't a squash match like we saw in the weeks leading up to this. Uh, they had a decent little match between the two of them. Eli eventually hits the gravy train for the win. He set up for one earlier on in the match, but Trevor reversed it, and then Eli just went back to the gravy train again and uh, picks up another victory, building himself up which I would assume he will have a match at Bound for Glory. He is featured on the poster, I believe. So with him missing Slammiversary, I kind of figured that he would be on the uh, Bound for Glory card. Uh, then we go backstage, and I think this happened earlier on in the day. OGs are talking. They say that LAX is weak in the mine, and they're going to make them break the seas fire. And apparently King is in action next. And we head to the ring. King vs. Cronus, I'm guessing a local luchador. Um, OGs end up handling the guy before the match. Bell rings. While the while Hernandez and Homicide are in the ring, referee's like, ah, just ring the bell anyway. King hits a spinning back fist, lays out Cronus. King picks up the victory. Um, King gets on the mic and kind of talks down to LAX and Conan. He tells them not to worry about the ceasefire and all this other stuff. Basically trying to get them to come out and break it, which is what he said earlier on. However, they did not show up. Later on in the evening, we learn that the six-man match for Bound for Glory is going to be a concrete jungle death match, I believe. Uh, yes. So I am intrigued to know what that is about. Uh, yeah, and I will see it live. So that should be... Pretty interesting. Then we head backstage, and LAX is there. Santana and Ortiz are livid, uh, obviously because the OGs were out there running their mouth, and you know there's nothing they could do about it. Conan says, "Obviously, I know what I'm doing. I've been in the business for so long." Da 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 da. Uh, he tells tells them though, if they do break the ceasefire, they I guess uh, whoever the people were that made the match or the ceasefire thing. Apparently, they are going to come after them with a 55-gallon drum of acid. So there is uh, definitely some repercussions for uh, breaking the seas fire. And then up next, we had Alicia versus Fabi Apache. Um, I actually enjoyed this match. Normally, um, Alicia's matches don't, I don't know, they aren't as smooth and just flowing well. But I, I thought the pace was slowed down that she seemed to really benefit from this. Um, the two put on, like I said, a decent match. Uh, Fabi Apache seems to be well-liked by the uh, Mexico crowd. Apparently, she had lost a hair versus hair match. I believe it was hair versus hair, which is why she has the shaved head. Because I think on the poster or the uh, preview for the match between her and Alicia that she actually had a full head of hair, but she might have had the headdress on. So regardless, that's why she has a shaved head, uh, but Fabi Apache eventually puts Alicia away with a sit-out powerbomb. Then we see Josh go into the ring, and I guess he was going to interview uh, Fabi about or her interaction with Tessa earlier on. Obviously, there's a little uh, miscommunication here because Josh was trying to maneuver her to get in front of the camera. Then we had a translator come in the ring, um, but basically she answers by sending a challenge out to Tessa Blanchard, and we learn that match will take place next week. Um, again, we still don't know what Tessa's plans are for Bound for Glory. Uh, I would assume that we will probably get a Sue Young versus Allie match, maybe one in, once and for all. Uh, they have a match next week. I believe it's a tag match. It's Allie and Kiara versus the Undead Maid of Honor and Sue Young, which they had an abbreviation for the Undead Maid of Honor, and I was like, the hell is that? And then Josh said it, and I was like, oh, that makes sense. Uh, then we go backstage, and Mackenzie Mitchell is interviewing El Tejano. Good to see Mackenzie back. Um, I like both Mackenzie and Alicia, so can't say anything bad about either of them. It's just a shame that when one's there, the other one's not. I definitely could have used one of them for a ring announcer, like uh, Mackenzie did back uh, for the main event at Redemption, and I believe the main event at the Twitch WrestleCon show with Lucha Underground versus Impact Wrestling. But, hey, whatever, their choice. Um, but Tejano says that Austin may have his two friends, but he has his own, his fist, and his bull rope. And he says he's going to beat Austin Aries for the World Championship tonight. Then we uh, get Scarlett backstage, and she says that next week she has a huge announcement. I don't know if it was this point, but we went back to ringside, and uh, Don said that KM was unable to make the trip from the uh, 
incident that happened at the hands of Ares, Moose, and Killer Cross last week. So it was kind of a disappointment that he didn't make the trip, unless that's a swerve of some sort. Uh, because I, I would have liked to, for them to continue giving KM and Follow Boss m- momentum, which they had. Uh, a lot of people were very happy with the episode last week, like I was. They actually built a story throughout the entire episode, and you normally don't get that. Um, but yeah, so then we had the Lucha Brothers versus Swan and Seidel. Man, the reaction the two uh, Pentagon and Phoenix got was unbelievable. They are huge stars. Um, apparently, they are staying with Impact Wrestling at least through 2019. Um, I'll have more information on that on the, this week's Impact report. But uh, yeah, apparently they are not going to WWE, which is good to hear. Uh, but yeah, this was pretty much all the Lucha Brothers for a while. Eventually, Seidel and Swan started to work together. Match was pretty even at that point. And then uh, I think Swan and Seidel hit uh, jumping, uh, standing Hurricane Ranas off the top rope on Pentagon and Phoenix. And then they went to set up for another move. There was a miscommunication. Um, Seidel received a package pile driver by Pentagon on the apron, and Phoenix hit his muscle buster spin down move. I don't know. I don't think we have a name for it. It'd be nice if we did, because Josh still says he hit that move that he's hit before. Um, but yeah, no, good match. Uh, OVE comes out, surrounds the ring to attack Pentagon and Phoenix. However, Brian Cage comes in and makes the save. I think next week we are getting Cage versus Jake Crist. So that should be an interesting match. Uh, then we go backstage and Mackenzie's interviewing Aries, Moose, and Killer Cross. Ask, <laughs> Aries asks Mackenzie why she's here. He thought she was fired, obviously playing up the whole story that she was fired when alicia was hired so i love when impact does little things like that uh but aries says he has taken care of everyone so they had to go to another country and find an opponent and he says the impact championship will remain on his shoulder after tonight so that was a really good interview by aries and then we got moose trying to take a selfie with mckenzie which was hilarious him and his damn romper romp him i guess is uh what we're going with and then we uh, see the Desi Hit Squad. They're getting massages. Um, they say next week they have a non-title match against LAX. Gama Singh comes into the room. Broom in hand. Starts chasing them. Yelling at them. Telling them there's no time for massages. Uh, yells at them some more. And then uh, he makes them start training. So, I, I mean, I, I, I would love to see just Gama Singh just beating them with a broomstick every week and yelling at them. It is entertaining. Uh, but next week, that should be a decent match between them and LAX. Uh, then we get a Joe Hendry's debut or new song that he debuted. Um, I don't think it was as good as his song from uh, last week, but or uh, Access Denied, right? Yeah, that was the song. Um, but it, it, it was just kind of randomly thrown in there. That was, that was my only gripe with it because it's not like either of the men were on the show, which I'm sure some people were happy about. But yeah. Uh, then we get the GWN flashback from Ultimate X years back. I feel like they cut off the ending. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention because no need to pay attention to these. Uh, then we uh, get a recap of the whole Ali, Sue Young, and Tessa angle, which that was when the announcement came for that tag match that I mentioned earlier between Ali and Kiara versus Sue Young and the Undead Maid of Honor. Um, and then we find out that abyss is the one that is being inducted into the impact hall of fame very well deserved glad to hear it was him um i I mentioned on the impact report i did two days ago that it was just a hunch i thought maybe that that was the reason the impact officials and wwe officials met but apparently that wasn't the case um i think there's some more news floating around now i'll have an update on that on sunday but yeah great to hear abyss deserves it um and then even everybody on Twitter said that he deserved it. Everybody said what a great guy he was. So good stuff there. And we got the main event, Austin Aries versus Tejano. Um, <clears throat> this was a decent match. Very slow paced. It, it seemed like both of them were kind of working heel styles here. Um, I love the part in the beginning where I guess the referee put the world title off to the side. And you see just Killer Cross kind of drag the title from one end to the other end, put it in the corner, which it is used later on, but it was just a good little spot. Um, yeah, they they had a pretty pretty normal match, nothing too crazy. Uh, Aries went to grab the bull rope. Ref grabs it from him. Then he grabs the title in the corner. 
Ref takes that too. Uh, at this point, I think uh, the ref was taking the title out of the ring. Tejano hits Aries with a super kick and then whips him with the rope. Gets a near fall or Aries got his foot on the rope, one or the other. Um, Tejano looked to be in control. Aries ends up hitting the brain buster and that was that. So uh, at this point, Aries, oh no, I'm sorry, Johnny Impact appears on the screen and he says he may not be medically cleared by Bound for Glory, but he says once his neck is healed, he will be seeing him and he says he may, not, may see him a whole lot sooner than he originally thought. And of course, Aries is like, oh, I know this game, I played this game. This is what happened when with uh, Aries and Moose. Um, so Aries starts getting paranoid, looks for him in the crowd, sends Moose and Killer Cross into the crowd to look for him. Uh, Aries' back's turned. Johnny Impact comes down the ramp. He gets the upper hand on Aries. Aries retreats. Then all of a sudden, Edwards comes through the crowd, kendo stick in hand, and takes out Cross and Moose, or it was just Moose, and they get chased all the way to the back. So I thought that was decent after the match. Um, we uh, just got some more building toward that match at Bound for Glory. And then I believe it was either this after I think it was this afternoon that Impact made it official on their Twitch, on their Twitter account, that it will be Moose versus Eddie Edwards. We all kind of expected this match to happen. Um, I think Ed Eddie said something uh, about them having a match or something. It was very similar to basically him saying that we're going to have a match at Bound for Glory on Twitter, uh, probably when he was hyping up the free hat giveaway. But um, yeah, so I'm assuming we're going to get Tessa versus either maybe somebody coming back uh, or Taya. Those are really the only two options. I could see us getting, like I said earlier, Allie versus Sue Young in a, I, I guess, in a match that would end this feud. Maybe a casket match or something like that, but they already had one of those. I don't know. I feel like that match is going to happen, but there's a good possibility it doesn't. Um, Eli Drake will have some sort of open challenge, which I would assume this would be either, again, a returning star or someone maybe making a huge debut, a one-off. I know Jericho's name has been thrown around, which I would love to see the two of them, but that's kind of far-fetched, but never say never in the wrestling world. Um, I expect, obviously, Matt Seidel and Rich Swan to have a match that probably should open the show. They'll put on a hell of a match. Um, I wonder what Killer Cross is going to do. I mean, he's kind of just been the bodyguard henchman for Austin Aries. He really hasn't done too much work in the ring recently. Uh, I mean, he had that tag match with Aries against, well, Edwards. Um, and then, like I said, Moose and Edwards are going to have that match. We have the two six-mans, the world title match. I mean, I, I think... Less is more if they kind of go the slam anniversary route where they give each match time to breathe and put on a hell of a show rather than having, you know, kind of like they did at Redemption where they kind of had a bunch of matches and some were just not, not throwaways, but they weren't up to the quality they could have been. So, like I said, there's three more impacts, I believe, to go before Bound for Glory. Let's see, one, two, and three. So, yes, but... Should be a good pay-per-view. I'm looking forward to it. This will be my first Impact Wrestling show, so that should be fun. Um, crowd's going to be great. I've never been to the Melrose Ballroom either, so new experience all around. Um, like I said earlier, I will see you guys on Sunday for another Impact report. Um, yeah, so thanks for checking out my video, and until then, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.